Hi, Babe here, and today we're going to check out the work of Ruan Jia. Now, he's a concept artist, and I'm pretty sure you've heard of this guy because he's pretty well known. Um, very, very high quality um, artwork here, and I do like the texturedness of it, or his work is not super smooth unless he's um, doing some kind of skin. His work is generally a bit more textured, and a lot of his pieces can actually become prints like if he decided to sell them as prints I think they would make good money so it's pretty cool because it's th that's because his work is just super um high quality right and um yeah um he does have like a couple of videos on YouTube um he doesn't have his own channel however um I think he did an interview with the shit with the trojan horse kind of channel um he also has like a couple of painting videos um i'll be linking all of the links in the description below um and yeah he has a pretty decent portfolio on um, art station more than a hundred thousand subs so that's pretty impressive right um and yeah it's just his quality of work is pretty intense and he does a mix of fantasy and sci-fi he does have a lean towards more fantasy types of artwork but yeah, it's pretty awesome. Sometimes he'll actually mix both. Like, it's part fantasy and part sci-fi. So, yeah. And I do like the way he does his forms, especially for his sci-fi um, art pieces. Just because they're more organic. And it feels like a Baroque kind of painting. Just because there's so much um, ornamentation. Right? There's so many kind of design motifs. And they're kind of very detailed in a way. And like there's more to see in each of his um, paintings, right? And again, they do feel like prints. Um, or they could be sold as prints. And yeah. And not a lot of photo bashing, just direct painting, which is pretty cool. Um, these sorts of paintings take a lot of time, right? And uh, I love the kind of... It's pretty high quality. Again, it's not exactly impressionistic. Maybe it can start out as impressionistic, but... He kind of brings it to a more refined level eventually, right? And he does a lot of like complete stuff where the whole frame is kind of filled up. It's not just like a character. Um, it's usually like a full scene, which is pretty impressive. And it's not just like an environment piece. Like it's more of an, it, it has a bit of narrative, um, has a bit of design because he does add a lot of detail in his work. So fuck, right? Um, and if you actually zoom in on his work, thankfully he does post like the high quality or, or the full versions of it, at least. Um, like you can see the the smaller brush strokes, and um, yeah, they take time. And I do like his colors. Um, they're very um, like there's a bit of hue saturation or hue variation, but it's not too much. It's pretty kind of toned down, or it's not super strong. So he does have some very saturated parts, but also has a bit of hue variation, very, very subtle hues are kind of um, spread out throughout the piece, right? And it's his work is tend or his work tends to be kind of sharp, like they have a bit of grit to it, kind of similar to, to the uh, the work of Greg Rutkowski. They both have that kind of sharp, gritty kind of look, which I am a fan of. I mean, look at the amount of detail in this um, dragon, right? In this dragon head. Um, and this sort of thing that takes time, right? And you actually have to go deeper um, with more finer brush strokes. Um, I think Boro CG, Boro Dante, talked about this. Um, I'm not sure if he mentioned uh, or he, if he talked about Ruin Gia, but he mentioned about the idea of using a smaller brush. Um, so I think this was the initial kind of painting. It's pretty rough, but it, it already has a bit of design in it and some narrative. And then he kind of just went, went or gone, or he just dived more into detail. He did change a few things here, right? But yeah. And again, very, very textured look. It could be like some kind of wallpaper or screensaver, right? And the way he renders or paints, it's actually kind of realistic. Because it's, <coughs> excuse me, it's not super, it's not graphical in nature, right? Like you can see the, the subtle value kind of range and shifts so and you can see it a lot when he does his lighting where it's just um 
you can see the uh, the different light sources in the piece or in the armor in the face lots of reflected lighting right it does have that realistic kind of look to it and even when he does his environments he kind of he paints consistently right um and he has a solid kind of style so that's pretty you know for me that's kind of very impressive just because he found his kind of artistic voice uh, where he developed it i think that's a more appropriate way of saying it or more accurate to say um I mean, look at the amount of texture here or the the sharpness of it i mean he had to probably zoom in just to kind of get this effect and maybe in the end i think he did use some kind of sharpen filter just to be extra sharp you know another sci-fi piece um let me just do this right wow and he does have like a lean like his faces are anime-ish so that's not a bad thing i mean yeah well, it's not, it's not an anime, it's just, um, very, you know, typical, like, anime, <laughs> kind of, like, East Asian, right? Hopefully I'm right. Um, I mean, look at the quality of it. Even if you zoom in, it's kind of, it's already kind of hard to see the, uh, the brush strokes. I mean, you can still see it, but it's pretty small. So this guy probably had to go deeper and deeper just to get this sort of look, right? It looks even better kind of zoomed out um i mean that's i mean this is amazing right and again he can do like fantasy and sci-fi right and he kind of switches here and there i think this is based off of alita it's kind of fan art right wow look at the details of it again it does have that baroque kind of design or kind of look but then again it, 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 this is based off of the 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 armor or the the mechanical parts of the actual alita character which is kind of um like it has a lot of detail if you like check out the film it's very kind of or ornamented or baroque ish right if you look at this sword i mean look at the amount of texture 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 um lots of fog cloud brushes being used here um but even if you zoom in it it just has i mean look at the face even though the proportions are it's stylized obviously but the way it's rendered it's amazing it's very very uh, realistic I mean, look at the blues here right look at the the reflected lighting or the yeah the lighting here in the side of the nose you can still see the kind of bluish part right whoa nice core shadow the way he did the hair jesus he took time you know it's not like um like a flat kind of brush stroke he had to like use a smaller brush to achieve this sort of thing right Oh, he even added some blues here in the shadow. Whoa, amazing, right? Now, for personally, for me, I probably will not or won't. I mean, who knows? But right now, I'm just not into the whole highly render stuff just because I need to focus more on just like basic anatomy, basic design, right? Basic concepts, like quick paintings. I'm really more of the um, or more into impressionistic kind of speed paintings than these sorts of things. But these kind of help to kind of set a nice standard, I think. Like, it shows you what's possible, right? And this is pretty cute. Um, she's eating her Xiaomian. I have no idea what Xiaomian is. It's entitled Meow Xiaomian. So, what the fuck? Uh, I have no idea what that thing is, but... No Mian? Fuck. Let's zoom in. Nice cat. Meow. Oh, it has wings. Um, I love the way he did the fabrics here. Wow. What the fuck? All right. He even spent time with the the background, right? A bit of architecture, architecture, architecture. Um, and look at those eyes. They're so pretty. Hi. <laughs> and he did add more detail in the kind of edges of the hair. Right here, you can see more smaller brush strokes. They're kind of more refined. It does get smoother here a bit, so and shinier, right? And she has like cat ears that are kind of placed in. That's kind of cool. And she's also having her solid meal for the day. Is that spam? Look at the edge of this shadow here. It has a bit of yellow coming off of this kind of um, ornament, right? Ah, wow, that's super hot. <laughs> Look at those clavicles. Jesus. 
any rate. Nice mechanical parts here, right? They're, they're a bit filled up, like there's a bit of design, or it has more... Even in sci-fi, it has more like ornamentation, you know? Like it's not just a plain kind of block shape, you know? Now this one's pretty cool. Let's zoom in here. Ooh, I mean look at how big this image is. He even spent time with the birds here, with the feathers, right? Um, nice petals, flower petals. That hair looks amazing. You can even see some of the strands here. I mean, I think he does layer his work just to be safe because because um, the architecture is kind of slightly... It has a bit of... It needs some refinement, so it's better to kind of separate that from the background. This bird is probably separated from the background as well. And from the architecture, and obviously this chick is kind of... In her own kind of layer. I mean, look at the, the, the armor design here, right? Again, I, I recommend you check out like... Baroque or Rococo. Because I think Rococo types of artwork are kind of the, the baby or they're from or they were build, built off of Baroque art, you know? Because there's this kind of development in art, especially in the kind of a Western um, sphere or Western kind of world, right? Civilization. Um, but damn. Nice back shot here, right? Look at that. And I like how she has a bit of fat. I think it's a she. It's a she. Right? And look at the foreshortening, right? She's obviously going to be way bigger in the head and in the shoulders, right? Just because you're seeing her from above. So, pretty cool. And it's okay to kind of exaggerate the uh, perspectives a bit. It's not a bad thing, right? Ew, another sci-fi. Look at those wheels, right? Ah, they're so beautiful. It's almost like there's like a galaxy in the wheels, right? Um, the way he paints is still um, the same. Fantasy, sci-fi, it doesn't matter. Very, very high quality, very rendered. Like, it goes really deep into detail, and it does still have a kind of sharpness to it. The way he paints reminds me of one of the pieces by J. Chael Park. Um, J. Chael Park likes to be more impressionistic, which I like. But he does have like, his natural, or this traditional oil painting of this kind of ship. And it does have the same kind of gritty kind of look. So, you know. So Ruin Jill just likes to bring it further, I think, to this kind of level. And it looks amazing, right? So this one does have a bit more um, um, architecture, I guess, because it's kind of the focus. Um, this guy obviously has some fucking powers. I mean, he just kind of created this hole, I'm guessing. <laughs> so this guy's a beast, right? Um, right? Amazing. Again, highly detailed. Another chick piece. All of his babes are really, really cute, by the way. Um, right? <laughs> I'm not saying I have a crush on her, but um, she is kind of cute. I mean, right? Oh, I love the folds here he did with his arm, right? And even the flaming thing here. I mean, look at that. It looks like an oil painting in a way. So he has that kind of, I'm not sure if he does have like a traditional background, but I, I do see a lot of like value variation in his, um, like it just filled up. Maybe not so, maybe there's a bit of hue variation, but it's too subtle to even notice. Uh, most of it is kind of, it's more of a value kind of thing. Like there's this multiple different value strokes. It's not super smooth and it does make it feel more natural, I think, right? And even when he does his edges for any of his like shapes, you can still see the kind of uh, the squiggliness of it. So it does provide a kind of natural look. So it's not like super sharp, right? Like super cut or super graphic. It looks like an actual um, painting. Right? Fuck. Now this one's more of a symmetrical um, piece here. Oh, he gets rougher in the, the background. So this one gets more impressionistic, you know? Well, it's not so much impressionistic, but, um, well, kind of, but, uh, obviously this part is way more detailed because it's the main focus, right? I'm guessing he did use that Photoshop, um, tool thing where you can kind of mirror, like, the canvas. Now, this one is more of a battle scene sci-fi. Um, she's kind of like a cat. I love the ears. Um, she's fighting this kind of mech thing. 
I'm guessing they're off planet or something, right? Nice package. <laughs> Look at the first shortening here. You can be so playful with the uh, the proportions whenever you're doing art, just because you can, right? I recommend you check out the work of Kim Jong Gi. He likes to kind of exaggerate a lot when it comes to like the perspective shots, um, and it looks kind of interesting. You can actually pull it off more in art, just because you can, and it actually adds more. It makes it look even cooler if you can kind of exaggerate things, right? Very very detailed piece. Again, if you focus in, you can see the smaller brush strokes here. And a bit of few variation here and there, but it's mostly about the uh, like the colors are or the hues are fairly like solid, like they fall under one category. They're kind of um, understandable, but within that, you can see a lot of like value. There's a big value range, I guess. You know. And in a way, he does have like contrast. For example, this one is the the darkest, right? The 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 under part of these wings. And for this piece, it's kind of um, in the back of her, or is it, there's something in the background that's kind of helping her body, her waist kind of pop out more. Look at the sword design, right? Look at, the, look at the armor plates here. Nice boobs. A bit of hue variation, right? You can see some blues, some reds, or some pur purples, or some pinks, right? Reminds me a bit of Martha Nile. She's a Spanish um, illustrator artist. She also likes to play a lot. No, for her, she's like way like beyond. Like she's just very in love with like very very neon types of colors. But they fall under the same category. I think also Jun An likes to play a lot with hue variation, right? You can see more more of that in the face as well here, right? Now this one she looks more Euro European, I would say, right? Just because of the proportions. Still very soft looking, but. Yeah, very very Euro European-ish, Caucasian-ish, right? I, and I love how I love how this character has some fat in her. Like it's not super. Well, I guess it's because he's fairly realistic, right? I mean, he does stylize stylizes fuck um, some parts, but it's he leans towards more on the realistic side, right? The way he uses light, the way he renders, the way he paints, the way he the subjects he paints, you know, they're very, very kind of based, <laughs> reality based, right? Um, oh, we have a Gundam here, um, fan art, right? Very, very cute babe here. Um, again, look at the edges here. Very, very kind of oily, very rough. Not super rough, but the edges aren't that clean. Um, like you can still see the average kind of edge, but it's not like super sharp. Which I think kind of takes away from the artistry a bit. Like it becomes too, if it becomes too sharp and graphical, it will start to become, well, like it's part of some graphical design thing. Like it's, um, like it's something done with Illustrator, with Adobe Illustrator, and it can feel very vector ish, which is, which is okay, but, um, you know, I think for me, I do like this more natural look, right? Um, look at the hue variation here, right? Awesome. Even the way he did the lighting, look at how there's this nice subtle shift of like red, pink, and then kind of bluish white, bluish gray. It's a very realistic way of um, painting in light, right? Like this mech, it, it feels like it's part of some kind of environment. Obviously it's kind of in a cloudy kind of um, day, but there's kind of an opening in the clouds and you can see it here, right? Very very cool. And again, he does full scenes, so that's pretty impressive, right? Awesome, another another sci-fi piece here. Um, maybe she just got out of the plane, or her vehicle maybe. Or maybe she's responsible for shooting this thing, who knows, but... I love it, it's more of a keyframe actually, although the, the frame itself is not like cinematic, but... It's an action frame, right? Look at how... Full it is, you know what I mean? Like it's um... It has more. Obviously, the chick has way more detail, right? May, um, way more texture. Not too much texture, may, maybe in the kind of armor, I guess. But, um... Look at how he was able to show the, the, not the texture of her suit. This kind of, it's like a matte latex kind of suit. And 
Notice that texture with the texture of the armor where it's a bit more shiny. It's not super like like um shiny, but it's kind of slightly reflective, you know? So that's pretty cool. Man, this butt looks good though, right? <laughs> Shit. And that tie gap, I mean Jesus Christ. I mean Oh, look at that back. Oh, nice arc. Now she's wearing something pretty tight, so you know. But Jesus. One day. <laughs> we can all dream, folks. We can all dream. Oh, this part here, in the bottom part. It's way more rougher, way more. Guess what? Impressionistic. You know, it's enough to kind of suggest the theme. But obviously, I mean, look at how he did this. All he did was focus on this for the most part, right? Ten, it's about 10 to 20% of the painting. It has the most of the kind of detail, and that's enough. Because that's where you look at anyway. And everything else can kind of be a bit rougher or more impressionistic because your mind kind of fills in the gaps, right? For as long as you have this kind of anchor point, everything else kind of just um, will, fo will follow, right? So Another sci-fi piece, so maybe something, maybe this vehicle kind of crash landed. Um, she's kind of checking up on this injured, perhaps, pilot, right? Again, very realistic way of painting. Um, the style is still the same. I see a bit of Roosting Gao in Ruanjia, in a way, when it comes to his environments. Um, now this one is um, way more impressionistic. It's not super detailed, it's not super finished, but to me it's kind of finished just because of my level, but for him, it's he could have gone further, but I mean, as a concept, it works, right? Maybe if he spent like more hours, obviously, it would obviously be more detailed, but this is kind of enough to tell a story, right? A bit of environment design in the background, um, right? Damn. And the brushes he uses, or he uses, he use, he uses, fuck. They have some texture in them, a bit. You can see it. It's kind of rough looking, right? Um, in a way, he's kind of opaque. An opaque kind of painter. He doesn't like to use like the opacity or brushes with some opacity in it. Kind of like Craig Mullins or John Wallen Liberto. He likes to go for a more oily kind of look. I think Greg Rutkowski. Greg Rutkowski is kind of the closest thing to Ruan G when it comes to like the grittiness of it or the texturedness of it. Um, yeah. Um, awesome dragon head here. I mean, Christ. And what's so pretty about this is you can actually zoom in and see a lot of the, the smaller brush strokes, right? Reminds me a bit of the work of Betty, Betty Zhang. Um, but for her, I think it's because of her pencil or graphite traditional um, experience. So whenever she does like paintings in Photoshop, she likes to add these sorts of smaller brush strokes. So maybe it's more of a habit kind of thing for her. But yeah, it kind of, it, it kind of reminded me of her work, right? So. And again, very refined here, very tight, um, but amazing. And again, it does have strong contrast. Look at the whites here, and look at the darks here, right? Same thing here. I love this kind of ship design. Look at how he was able to communicate the metalness of it, right? Is that a word, metalness? <laughs> look at how he did this glowing thing coming from the the sunset, right? Whoa, it actually looks like it's um like aluminum or um, steel, right? Yeah, sci-fi, fantasy, and when he does his sci-fi, I do like the way he does his forms. It's a it's a kind of a mix between sharp and uh, like he likes to curve the corners a bit. Um, it looks more organic, right? It still looks very baroque-ish, lots of detail, but it has that kind of um, organic look to it, right? Damn, nice butt. Another sci-fi piece. Now this one actually feels like it's in a sci uh, in a fantasy kind of environment. Um, oh, I love the springs here. Um, I'm not sure if this was a photo bashed in, hard to say, but look at the forms of this, um, um, of the, what do you call this? It's the, not the armor, but the, uh, the thing that covers the mechanical parts, fuck. The skin? Okay, the skin, yeah. The skin of it is very organic-ish, organic-like. Think of the armors of the engineers in the alien kind of world. Um, or just think of the work of H.R. Geiger, right? Now his work is way more, it's organic, but it's kind of 
sexual, which I do like, but it's kind of dark sexual, like it's almost demonic in a way, which is kind of alluring, but it's a bit too dark for me and um, kind of scary. But um, Ruben G is a bit more lighthearted. He likes whites, you know, he's not afraid to use whites. Even, even when he does his dragons, he likes to um, go for lighter, um, yeah. I love the way he did the rocks though. Even the rocks look interesting. <laughs> oh shit, it's a great compliment to the the softness of the uh, the vehicle, right? Look at how sharp the edges are. It's very pointy and then compare that to the, the the design of this vehicle here, right? Cool. Um I think he does have a video on this. Hopefully I can find it. Um but I do know he did like um uh like a a demo on painting a uh, a face a girl's face right i'm not sure if this is the exact exact one but i'll just link it in the description below um boo very very epic scene it's a war scene dragons are fighting or monsters are fighting in the the sky right and then we have the actual kind of soldiers here you know Ugh, look at the hair. Oh, it's not a full, um, but same thing. Now, the gun is way more kind of harsher, more kind of square-ish. But the armor, for her, her kind of parts, her mechanical parts, they're a bit... You can tell by the edges, way more organic, right? Awesome wiring here. I love the way he did, he did the hair, right? You can see the strands here. I love the kind of cat ears. Very, very cute. And again, realistic way of painting the face. Looks, it looks. I mean, it's, it's stylized. Obviously, the, the proportions are kind of a bit stylized, not too much, but um, yeah, the way it's rendered, the way it's painted, the way he did the lighting, and again with that contrast thing. Look at how it's almost white here, and then in the armor you can see it's almost like a black. I think very very strong contrast. Right. Look at the pinks here. It's kind of glowing. It, it, he also does like to focus or bring in some saturated parts. For this piece, it's kind of this thing here. Like, it's a very, very small part, but it's going to be there, right? Here, it's kind of this bluish thing, right? The, uh, the, the thrusting thrusters. <laughs> um, nice boobs. Oh! Again, you can see the kind of smaller pencil like brush strokes. Look at the first shortening of this arm. Amazing as hell, right? I'm not sure if he does like splash art for like games, maybe, but um, yeah, awesome. Now for the hair here, he actually kind of separated it into sections, kind of like anime, right? But I love seeing the smaller brush strokes here, the pencil like brush strokes, <sighs> sexy. Another war scene, right? Awesome. I love how the flags are all pointing here. So there's that compositional thing going on there, right? Oof. Another sci-fi piece. I think this thing just kind of crashed or kind of just, um... Yeah. So these are some soldiers here, right? The two pilots. Nice pose. Mm-hmm. Same thing here. Mm-hmm. Um, nice. Even, again, the sci-fi. This is more of a sci-fi piece. Very, very organic forms. Look at how he did the glowing part here. Same thing for the background here with some fires, right? Even here in the, the bottom part of this mech, of this kind of cockpit area, it's kind of sparking off. So there is there are a few spots in his paintings where he likes to kind of brighten it up or add a bit more saturation in them, right? And again, the way he paints is very, very realistic. It's like a full value range, you know? It's not, his work is not graphical. It's very... For me, very realistic in a way. Right. Awesome piece. Um, dragons. <sighs> Love the architecture. Look at the glowing thing in the mouth. High contrast. It's almost black here, right? And in the bottom part, it's pretty much white. Yellow white, right? I love the dragon design though. Very, very muscular. Look, look at the texture. Oh yeah. Greg Rutkowski also likes dragons, so, you know, yeah. Ooh. 
I'm not sure what Legend of the Cryptids, Cryptids, Cryptids mean. It, is it a game? <laughs> I'm not a gamer, so. But look at the high qualityness of it. <laughs> is that a word? No, it's not. Um, again, high contrast. You can see the blacks here. The uh, the foreground or the the ground is pretty light, right? Nice highlights here. Ah, amazing. Oh, it's a great transfer. Even though the edges are not super like tight, it works. Like his painting style works for both fantasy and sci-fi. And even if the forms or the design motifs change, like obviously for his fantasy stuff, it becomes less sharp, I guess. Um, because now this one, even when he does his sci-fi, it does have kind of organic look. But for this piece, it's pretty kind of sharp, very, very muscular, or not muscular, well, mas masculine, sorry, where it's uh, sharper and more harsh, right? Um, but it still works, you yeah. know. I like how some people can paint people well, well, even when they're like really small, because. You have to find a way to be able to simplify the whole figure, right? Look at how this guy is in shadow and his kind of front leg is not. Wow, it looks so realistic. I mean, look at how full this scene is. I'm not sure how long this painting would take, right? But... Christ almighty. Oh! Nice wings. They're kind of broken in the edges, so he's obviously some kind of demon. Oh, he's a baddie. Baddie! Um, again, more texture, more detail here, obviously. It gets kind of softer, less kind of contrasted everywhere else. And it gets more contrasted here. You can see there's some darks and some lights and highlights, right? Anita. Um, oh, nice uh, piece here. Boobs, always a good thing. I love the design. It, it looks more like a xenomorph, right? If you check out the design of the, of the, of the xenomorph, it's obviously going to be black. It has that latex kind of look, but this one, it's kind of um, latex-ish. But again, look at the amount of detail in this. It's very kind of um, ornamented or baroque, right? Where it's it has more parts in it, I would say. Again, with the the, the saturated parts here, with the with these sorts, I'm I'm guessing I'm guessing they're kind of power cells of some kind, or energy batteries, whatever. I love the folds here, right? Nice cat tail. Oh, he really likes the whole cat thing. Um, those boobs look amazing though, right? You can even see the uh, the pecs here. I used to draw boobs um, where I would just you know just draw like a sphere essentially, but there is this kind of like it. It's on top of the pec of the the pectoralis major, but of the chest muscles, right? So you can see here. Where it actually fades in to the shoulder, so that's kind of a real. His anatomy is pretty realistic, I would say, and even the way it's painted. Look at the skin. A bit of hue variation, not too much, but it's there. I can see some pink, some reds, red. Even the eyes, you can see some kind of purple, reddishness, kind of under the eye, and then it's complemented by the blues, right? Awesome. This is some kind of oh this is Halo the Halo fan art fan art right? Oof! Look at how realistic this thing is. If you kind of step back, it almost looks like it's a um, like a three D render or something, right? And even the edges they're a bit too clean, and that kind of makes it feel like shit. Is this thing like a three D render? Right, right. So look at how tight it is. Now this one is just intense. So. He doesn't actually soften the edges too much. It's pretty sharp, right? So this is a bit too high quality for me. It's still awesome though, but maybe one day, maybe one day. <laughs> Who knows? <sighs> nice dragon. The uh, the one without the wings, kind of like the, the Chinese version. <sighs> Damn! Again, the glowing parts, very saturated areas there. And look at, the, look, at, look at the contrast in the ears. It's super, it's pretty much black, right? And even the soldier here, it's pretty dark, pretty black. Um, black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. Um, <sighs> shit. Nice dragon here. 
oh, these guys will die, basically, just because, I mean, you just can't defeat this sort of thing, right? Contrast, look at the dark here. Texture, texture, very, very sharp, very, very sharp. Um, it's hard to see the strokes in this one just because he posted the, uh, it's, it's not like a full big image, so fuck. Can we zoom in here? Oh, not too much. But look at how it, it, it's kind of not too defined. This is the kind of look that I think I can build up to eventually. Where it's only like a, uh, uh, where it's not like fully, you know, like rendered. There's a bit of suggestion everywhere else, very, very impressionistic, but I want to be able to do this where it's a bit more, you know, defined and refined, right? And fine. Ooh, la la. I love the folds here. Right, the fabric, the drapery, oof. Like you can do so much with like folds or drapery and it can actually help you in the, uh, in terms of composition. Cause, um, yeah. Demon King. Daddy, um, nice wings here. Looks more demon-ish. It's, it's kind of like a bat wing, a bat's wing, right? It's not like a feathers and shit, um, where it's kind of soft and weak. Um, <laughs> it's more like um, like a like a bat, like a reptilian kind of thing, right? Nice. Um, what is this? Some kind of soldier, right? Great armor design here. Nice highlights. Again, blacks, blacks. Some highlights for the contrast. Very strong contrast in his work, right? And again, it's a full piece. It's a full painting. It's not just like a a simple graphical background. So th that makes it even more impressive right even the shield has some design shits christ oh so this is the last piece we're going to review or check out in his portfolio um this one is similar to this to the other sci-fi to the recent sci-fi pieces that we uh kind of explored um it's a bit more refined not too much um you can still see the kind of average edge it's not like super sharp compared to his like um halo piece or halo fan art piece um, but it works. It works. The lighting is good, right? The way he does, like, people is good. I can still see the brush strokes here. Looks amazing, right? It's, uh, it's not... The hue, the hue variation isn't too strong. It's a very, very subtle, if ever. Or there's hardly... It's, it's almost unnoticeable. So, it's more about the value range. Whenever you look at realistic types of... Whenever you see realistic types of, types of artwork, it's more about the value range. Like, there's this subtle value um, kind of shifts, right? Um, when you do, when you add it too much hue variation, it starts to become too uh, stylized, I guess, or it becomes too um, unnatural. I mean, there's always, everything has color, or it, fuck. <sighs> the point is, he's awesome. <laughs> and there's not a lot of, like, hues in his work. It's more about the value range, and it's more about the realistic kind of feel, right? And he does use smaller brush strokes. He doesn't use big sweeping brush strokes, you know? Maybe in the beginning, but eventually it kind of disappears just because of the way he paints. Like he likes to refine and define things more. Right? So that's it for this art review of Ruan Gia. Um, thank you for watching. Keep drawing, keep painting, and stay free.